I'm not saying I'm not saying the Democrats ran it. I've I've said, I'm, what I'm saying is they had an opportunity to propose their ideas a long time ago, and I'm telling them right now that if they really want this, I'll be waiting for it this next session because it does sound like a good idea. I just don't think that what they proposed in the way of an amendment on that day at the last minute was really what they intended, and I felt like it would be a poison pill for the bill, and that's why I voted against it. Right. And so we had the same opportunities last night that we've had for the last 10 years, and we saw the same result. You know, good idea, don't gut my bill, we're gonna vote it down, but go pursue it somewhere else and we're gonna help you along the way. I mean, that's not, we're not making policy, like we're making excuses. And they never make the proposal. They, they talk a big game, but they always, they always say, well, fraud's where the mail-in ballot is. Where are their bills? Where are their proposals? I'll listen to them, I want to solve it. Guess what, the mail-in voter fraud, it's, it's mostly a Democrat against Democrat. I, I just assume that all of it be done away with. I want my elections fair and clean. Okay, you, go ahead. If we have these string of other voter fraud uh, bills that are going to be coming up, do we expect as much contention and as much time periods as we have with this one? I believe the Democrats will be opposing us on all our suggestions because I don't really think their motive is concern about uh, the poor and the disenfranchised, I think their motive is to leave these doors open, unfortunately, and I hate to say that. But I've, I've been in this business a long time. I've actually done something about voter fraud. And what did I get in, in return? I, had, I was a Democrat. They recruited a, a, an opponent against me. They sicked the Justice Department on me. Th this is not, this is about free, safe, clean elections. That's what I want, and I, I truly hope that the Democrats want that, but their obstructionism on any issue having to do with trying to clean up the election system can only lead me to one conclusion, and that is they want these doors open. And, you know, I, I take to heart lots of things that Representative Alicetta said, and, but the notion that Democrats are obstruction, obstructing a process that's been controlled by Republicans is laughable. And for someone who just got here and is, is finding out what this system is about, where we can't even debate ideas, we can't come together on consensus, and the only way we can launch ideas is filing independent bills is ludicrous. That's not what we do here. Uh, we have an opportunity to make this process better, not just for Republicans and, Demo and, and Democrats, but for everybody. And we do our worst work when we go into this mode of free agency that you know, we're going to do this and you can be obstructions if you want, there's nothing obstructionist about being involved in dialogue. There's no obstruction to wanting to seek compromise. Uh, you know, we all have something to offer to the table. His rule interest, I will never jump in his way to tell him what his rule interest should look like because he knows it better than I. But at the same time, I would, would like for him to respect how things are done in the city that I represent. I, I, thought, the my, debate, I thought the debate, Mr. Fisher, was, was gentlemanly and, and gentle lady-like, and I thought there was plenty of opportunity for you all to get your points across. And uh, I, I'm glad you were able to, to get your points across. Do I think that you truly believe in your heart that uh, this may disenfranchise people? I, I really believe that that is some of your motive. I, I'm just looking at the overall game plan here, which is, I think, to, to try to stop any true election code reform. And I if you all are really serious about this, I will listen to your ideas, and I'm, I'm just a freshman. I'm, don't get me caught up in this, in this partisanship. I would prefer that you all had some good ideas, and I'll sign on to them. I've signed on to several Democrat bills, not necessarily having to do with, uh, with well, we, I haven't seen any bills on the election code from the Democrats, but some other issues. I, I'm interested in good ideas, and I think most of the people in my party are. Thing I was interested in, you seem uh, to, I'm not, I'm not going to say attack uh, Representative Hartless, but you seem pretty concerned with maybe a lack of organization when she was presenting the bill. No, I mean, I, I have a deep, a deep amount of respect for, for Patricia Hartless. I mean, we're friends. We've served a few sessions together. We've, we've actually been on the same side of some battles. And so I, I'm, I very much admire her and her tactics. And, you know, this issue we happen to disagree on. And so uh, what, what, doesn't, you know, is not anything new. I mean, when you take the microphone to defend a measure, you know, it is expected that we're going to engage in vigorous debate. I mean, we're, 
we need to respect each other, we need to be cordial, but you know, it's, there, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no room for, you know, error or banter, and, and I know that Patricia was being very careful with her responses, uh, and I just didn't feel like we were having an honest debate, so I asked her if she was prepared to debate, and that I'd be happy to debate anybody. I wanted to give her that opportunity to bring somebody who wanted to debate, and as you saw in the middle of the bill, Representative Phillips, is a good friend of mine, took the mic for several amendments, and he debated, and as did many other people, and that's common and customary, so it was just my opportunity as a courtesy to, to say, you know, if, if you don't want to debate me, I'll debate somebody else. As, as a freshman, this is, was my observation, because this is really the, the first real major debate we've had that I've witnessed, and uh, I think what happened is that the, the argument devolved into you're, in effect, racist, and to propose this bill. And that's not what, what I really believe is in the hearts of, of the Republicans that, that back this bill. And by the way, the press has been reporting that this was uh, strictly along party lines. We had a Democrat vote with us last night. I th that's what also needs to be reported. But getting back to the debate, uh, at some point it just became ugly. And when you put yourself in, that, in the shoes of that individual, the last thing you want to be called is it, well, be told is that you have, quote, some kind of ulterior motive for trying to do what you're trying to do. I, I really believe that, that Republicans feel that this will help in trying to close the door on voter fraud. And it is my position that we are actually empowering people to vote that have not voted before because they feel that the system is flawed. Where's this racist? Well, what, what do you say is you just want to disenfranchise the, the uh, people of color, the elderly, uh, the you know, people of a different ethnic origin. What, what is that but code word for you're a racist? That's all it is. And then you have you know, <laughs> Representative Coleman at the end of the debate um, standing up with a lot of the minority members in, in the House. I mean, what did that represent? Well, look, let's, let's, let's take a step back. I mean, I, no one is calling Patricia Harvest a racist. Uh, and, and while the debate was very passionate, I mean, you have to understand the context by which some of these members, uh, what their ancestors went through and the passion that they feel. And I think they're entitled to speak. Uh, you know, I think, are they, are they entitled to make groundless attacks and baseless attacks? Absolutely not. But they're entitled to represent their districts. And I think that how this sort of unraveled towards the end uh, and I can't speak for any member of the House, even friends of mine, but I, I believe there was a, a, a perception that, that there were minority members making representations of how this bill does not impact minority communities, and that is an opinion, an opinion. I think Representative Coleman felt that he had an, a, a different opinion and wanted to make sure that that opinion was also received, and I think that in the Q&A and the back and forth that takes place on the microphone, I don't think Representative Coleman was having his comments acknowledged, and I think that's where he became upset. What I but got from that exchange is something completely different. What, what I think Representative Coleman wanted Patricia Hollers to say is that the Democrats represent minorities, but the reality is, is they have Republicans now representing them as well, and that, and, and that I think is what really upset the Democrats. And that's not dispute. I mean, I, that's not disputable. I mean, this is proof positive that there are you know, Latinos in the Republican Party, there are minorities, African Americans in the Republican Party. That's not, I think the issue was, you know, no one individual minority speaks for the body. And so... Yeah, that's a good thing. Because, yeah. because in order to empower minorities, you need to have two parties, or maybe three or four, but you need to have a choice. Because if you don't have a choice, the other side will just take you for granted. And, it was and the other that. side will give up on you. And, and this is what is very good, I think, and I hope Mr. F Martinez Fisher agrees with me, that it is good to have two different sides from, from uh, ethnic minority.